Hey there everybody, welcome to ePlan Devel, my YouTube channel. Um, so I've had a lot of people asking me to do an altar tour, um, and like a sacred space tour, um, for how I practice and what I have on my altar as a uh, male witch who has a bit of an hereditary line um, and how I, I, I set up my altar space. So. I am about to change my altar over to my Samhain altar. Um, obviously it's up in the middle of October, Samhain's coming up really quickly, I haven't had a chance to do it yet. So I thought I would do it and I thought I'd also take you through uh, the process of me setting up my altar. So I've already cleared away my previous altar, so that's now empty and I have now cleaned, physically cleaned the surface, um, the chest of drawers where it sits on. So I'll take you through the process of me creating my sound altar. Hope you enjoy. So this is the space where my altar is gonna be. Um, I have got this cloth, which is nice and black. It's got the triquetra on it. Um, so that's gonna go there. Um, it's a shame it's a bit too short. I would like it to be a bit longer um, so I can, it covers the whole space, but not a problem. We can work around that. Um, so yeah, that's the base and I'll show you what's going to go on it. So first things first are my candlesticks. So I have two candlesticks, one on each side. They are a pentagram design with ivy growing up them and the ivy's on opposite sides. Um, I've got two white candles in here, which is fine. Um, you could have a white one and a black one to represent the goddess and the god. Um, or you can change them to be colours. I was looking for some black ones in town today but I didn't find any. But that's not a problem, I'm sure I will pick some up in the next day or two. On every altar that I set up, I always have a representation of the goddess and a representation of the god. Um, I like these ones because they're very dark, they're stone, and they've got the, the plants growing up them. He's got a little bit of quartz inside him there, and she has a pentagram in her tummy. Um, so I like these, they're really dark um, and they look like stone with um, vines and stuff growing up them. So they will go there on my altar. So the next thing I've got on my altar are these two little off wooden offering bowls. One there and one there. And in this one there is some salt and it's mixed with some herbs for protection and cleansing. This can be scattered around before doing any spell work or ritual work. And this is a blend of herbs specifically for Samhain. Um, and that can be used as an offering or you can again burn it in a cauldron on a charcoal block. Um, so this is the circle casting salts, which I got from the Moon Goddess Garden on eBay. And this is the Freya's Cauldron Magical Herb Blend for Samhain. Got it from Freya's Cauldron on eBay as well. Um, you can make your own if you have the time. You can make your own herb blends and your own magical salts, um, but for ease, I just buy it. So yeah, the next two items on there are them. So the next thing I've decided to put on my altar um, is this beautiful scrying orb in this beautiful frame. This came in my Witch's Moon box very recently. Um, and because, you know, the veil is thinning, it's a perfect time to do this. And it's something I've not actually done. Um, so I thought, do you know what? It's gonna go up there and we're gonna have a go with it and see what happens. So the next thing that's going up is my cauldron. So I have this lovely, quite large cast iron cauldron. It's sat on a coaster, just cause if it gets hot, I don't want it to burn the wood. Um, and next to it, I've got a tiny little one, which is used for burning like resin incense. You can burn incense in this, or loose leaf incense. You can also burn incense in this, um, which should be really nice. This can also be used for scrying. You can have written water and scry with water. It's a versatile piece of kit. It's a cauldron for any witch. There's so much you can do with this. Um, and it looks really nice, and it looks really witchy. So that sticks to the stereotypes. Every witch needs a cauldron, so that's going there. So at the moment, we're not looking too bad. It's slowly getting there. So the next item I've placed is a piece of blue sodalite crystal. Um, now blue sodalite is really good for um, helping us in our practice of psychic insight. It's really good in using in divination, when using tower, or anything like sort of intuitive. It helps you break through those barriers. And um, so on a salmon altar, it's the perfect thing to have. So the next bit I put on is this hematite obelisk. 
Uh, hematite's really good for grounding, really good for banishing negativity. Um, and it's also good for getting rid of really nasty things, like it's the ultimate grounding stone. Um, so if you're doing a bit of scrying, maybe a bit of contacting your ancestors, bringing them into your space, it's really useful to have that around. And the final crystal stone that I'm going to place on my altar is a piece of black tourmaline. Again, really good for grounding, really good for dispelling negativity. Um, so you can't have too much of that, especially when you're going to be at this time of year, carrying out rituals to connect with your ancestors or to connect with spirit or invite spirit into your space. It's always good to have some of that. And a lot of these items, or most of these items, have come from the Witch's Moon Box. So every month, Witch's Moon Box gives you an oracle card. And this is my oracle card for this month, for October. It's um, from the Making Magic Oracle deck, I believe. And it says, time to shine, creates the energetic resonance for golden opportunities. And it has a sigil on it. Now, I'm going to keep that out here for a month until my next Oracle card comes through and just remember the message. Um, I'll also get um, some more cards shortly. Um, I'll just move things around a little bit to make it more aesthetically pleasing. Oh, also, I forgot to mention this. This is the scrying anointing oil that came in this month's which is Moon which is wonderful, so that's going to be on there to be used as well. And the final thing I've added is the Oracle deck that I'm currently using, um, which is the Angels and Ancestors Oracle by Kyle Gray. Uh, I always add a piece of quartz or a stone on top of it. This is a nice, big, chunky, rough piece of quartz. It's lovely. Um, I think that came in the Witch's Moon Box as well. And then, obviously, I have incense, and this is my Selenite incense tray which is another Witch's Moon purchase. Um, there's a spell there to use um, that came with Witch's Moon regarding the uh, scrying mirror. And I've also got a um, ritual from last year's Witch's Moon, which is one to honor your ancestors. So at the moment, this is what it looks like. Nice and basic. Well, not particularly basic. Oh, I've got a little candle here as well and a little tea light holder. Um, so what I will do, I will pull an oracle card um, for everyone that's watching and see what the message is that will lead, hopefully lead us up to sewing. So let's pull an oracle card from my favorite deck and see what the message is. So, the message that the oracle has given us, surprisingly, is the great teacher. And the keywords are learn from spiritual experiences. So, this is what it says about the great teacher. It says, know that what is happening around you is divinely inspired. Learn from your current experiences, then share them with others. This card is inspired by Jesus. Who, what, who is one of the most widely acknowledged and loved spiritual teachers of all time. But there is a great teacher in every tradition, and this card represents the one to whom you feel closest, as well as the great teacher within. The teacher wears simple clothes here to demonstrate that even if you live a simple life, it can be an incredibly spiritual one. He's surrounded by a sense of serenity and harmony, because I, he has absolute trust in the higher power that moves through him. And the dove on the card represents receiving answers to prayers through signs and experiencing peace through joy. This card can represent a teacher in your life or the great teacher within. Either way, it shows that you have dedicated a lot of time, effort and energy to understanding yourself and the world. You are having spiritual experiences at this time and gaining a greater awareness of what you need to do in order to grow. There is a great chance that you've been having it. There is a great chance that if you've been having any challenges recently, You've surmounted them and allowed them to be vehicles to lessons that are helping your spiritual connection. If you feel that you've received messages from heaven or from the universe recently, this card is confirmation that these have indeed been worthwhile experiences. So, um, despite it being the Jesus card, which I'm not overly fond of, it's actually quite a good message considering we're setting up our Samhain altar and for the time of year that it is. So, this is the altar. 
this is what I'll be using it for. Um, I will be doing a lot more work at this altar and it's totally finished. Um, I'll be going out tomorrow up to Pendle in Lancashire um, where the Pendle Witch Trials were and if there's any fallen branches or anything interesting to decorate the altar with foliage of the season I will do. Um, but yeah, that is my altar tour. So I hope you've enjoyed um, this video guys. Um, I've been asked and asked and asked for a long time to create an altar tour. So I thought instead of just showing you my altar, why don't I take you through the process of me setting it up for Samhain. Um, as I said, it's not finished yet. There's a few more pieces I want to put on. Um, and it's all about honouring our ancestors um, and, you know, stepping through the veil at this time of year. Um, and that can be done through ritual and other things. Um, let me know what you think. Um, ask any questions below in the comments. Um, and tell me what you want to see from me next. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching and I hope to speak to you soon. Bye-bye.